Where most of us would see problems, entrepreneurs see opportunities. Whether you're working in a small, medium or even a large international company, companies increasingly have to search for new products, new processes or new services. And at the same time, we see that more and more people get involved in even starting up their own firms. Uh, recent figures show, for instance, that one out of ten European citizens is actually considering or even already starting up their own private firm. We think that these processes really start with high quality individuals that identify high quality opportunities. Opportunities are often in its most elementary form raw ideas. And these ideas you might come across accidentally. Uh, you just stumble upon. Or they might be a result of a creative sessions with others. Sometimes they, over, often, they also involve systematic search. What we see, for instance, from opportunity research is that opportunities often come from trends and developments in society. For instance, new technologies. Uh, take, for instance, the example of domotics, home automation. A lot of new uh, business ideas were actually fueled by the fact that smartphone technologies were introduced. Uh, suddenly you were able to um, use a remote control uh, to um, switch on your lights or to switch on the heating via your smartphone. So maybe you could conclude that ideas are always the same as opportunities. Well, it's a little bit more than that. Um, and let me show you that by the following example. It was a study by Stevens and Burley. In this study, they, they watched how fast ideas actually emerged into a commercial success. And what started up as 3,000 initial raw ideas, only one of them eventually became a commercial success. So ideas are not the same as opportunities. Opportunities have additional qualities. They solve a certain problem, they address a certain need or they address a certain pain. Basically they add value eh, or popular, they get a certain job done. And there's a nice famous quote from Harvard Business School professor Theodore Levitt who actually nicely phrases this. He says, People don't actually want to buy a quarter inch drill, they want to drill a quarter inch hole. So opportunities have additional qualities above ideas. But how do ideas actually merge or develop into an opportunity? Well we know from science that this is not something that is happening overnight, nor is it something that is happening in isolation. So opportunities evolve in a longer period of time and they are a social process. So the process from raw rudimentary ideas towards a real opportunity actually goes through two different phases. The first phase is what we call opportunity objectification. The second phase is what we call opportunity enactment. Opportunity objectification means that the idea has to grow you have to find a language in order to explain what your idea is really about. It often starts with an intuition or a gut feeling and you have to give it words to be able to explain your idea, what it is really about, um, for instance, to family, friends or colleagues. And this is really the process when you develop a language for your idea. Maybe friends or family will ask you questions about it. What is it really like? What do you mean by that? And this will help you to really get your idea explicit. This is what we call objectification of opportunities. Then as the idea grows and grows, you need to really get it out there in the open. So not only the close circles of family and friends, but you also have to think about, can I actually realize this idea? Can I produce it? Can I maybe even protect my idea? Can I make money with it? So your idea has to become more explicit in ways that you have to be able to explain it, for instance, to professional partners, maybe even to investors or others in your network. This is what we call opportunity 
enactment, then the opportunity really gets out there and you have to think about additional points, additional qualities, additional items associated with your idea. So as soon as the opportunity is enacted, it might become a business concept or eventually a business plan. And the ability to identify high potential opportunity of individuals, the importance of that decreases, you could say. Um, so basically the most important question is, can you actually learn to identify high quality opportunities or become better at it? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, we've seen from different studies that this is actually possible. And perhaps most important are those studies where they compare expert entrepreneurs with novices. And by expert, I mean those who started multiple companies and novices who have just started only one, for instance. One of the most important factors explaining the differences between novices and expert is prior knowledge. Prior knowledge helps you to identify higher quality opportunities because you know a particular industry, you know a particular sector, for instance, and you also know where problems may lie in that particular sector. So what we see is that prior knowledge seems to influence the type and the quality of opportunities that are being identified. A second factor is what we see from studies uh, that compare novices and experts. Um, experts tend to look at opportunities, evaluate opportunities in a different way than novices do. For instance, novices tend to look at really the novelty, for instance, of an idea. Is it really groundbreaking? Does it really innovate the world? Whereas experts also tend to look at things like, can I connect the idea to someone in my network? Or can I connect the idea to a viable revenue stream? Can I make money from it? So experts evaluate ideas differently than novices do. A third factor that is important is the type of people you actually engage with. Eh? Like I said, opportunity enactment, but also objectification is basically a social process. So it helps when you are in a network that is able to feed your idea in a proper way. So these could be other entrepreneurs, experienced ones, people with high content knowledge, uh, those who are, are uh, complementary to your skills, etc. So networks are a third factor. A fourth factor that influences your ability to identify opportunities is your other abilities. For instance, it might help if you are a creative person uh, so that you come up with more or more original ideas. Also, what we see is optimism and the belief in your own capabilities helps in this matter. On a recent study we did, we also looked at the influence of a general ability, complex problem solving. And we also saw that there was a relation between your ability to solve complex problems and your ability to identify opportunities. And one of the reasons for that might be that those who are good at complex problem solving are also the ones that challenge new information and that they are really, really keen on doing that. Furthermore, they might be able to really um, um, evaluate and go through a lot of information. So that also helps you to evaluate and work on your opportunity. To sum up, I think there's more enough uh, evidence that supports the idea that your ability to identify opportunities is really something that you can learn and not only born with. Um, but the best way to find out is actually challenge yourself.